welcome Donald J. Trump. We're back, 7.30 CBS Mornings, and that on your screen was the moment here last night at the RNC when former President Donald Trump made his very first public appearance since Saturday's assassination attempt. Yesterday, it also became official. He was nominated to the Republican ticket, and he named J.D. Vance, a 39-year-old freshman senator from Ohio, as his running mate. So let's talk all about it. CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett joins me, and CBS News Chief Election and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa, they both join me now. Gentlemen, good morning to you. You're each close observers of former President Trump, have been for years. So, Bob, you first. When he walked out of that tunnel, what did you notice? He was subdued. He didn't say a word all evening. This was a former president who had just survived an assassination attempt. For him, it was a deeply personal moment, but also a political moment to see the Republican Party convening here in Milwaukee, gathering around him. But as someone who is been covering Trump for a long time, going back to 2010, as he just started to rise in the political field. This is someone who is rarely emotional in his public settings. He's a television star. He is someone who has been on the public stage for more than a half century, going back to his days in New York real estate. Rarely portrays anything he's feeling, but you could see Last night, he was visibly moved by the moment to see those ovations here in the arena behind us. Major, you know, there's always a convention bump, but this sure. is a different kind of a convention given what happened on Saturday. Will we see a change in the polls? We are likely to. We always have after conventions. The question always is, how long does it last and how big is the bump? We'll find out about that. But one thing worth pointing out about last night, it is atypical for a wordless Trump appearance to have gravity. Last night was a wordless Trump appearance. It had gravity precisely as the former president intended. Something that spoke volumes, Major, was the pick of J.D. Vance as his vice president. I spoke to a lot of folks who were in attendance, delegates, about Vance's journey from critic to yes. ally. A lot of them shrugged. They said, who wasn't a critic of Donald Trump back in 2016, 2017? Yes, but J.D. Vance is a critic in its own category. I mean, there were critics of former President Trump in 2016. Few described his rhetoric as rhetorical heron, heroin. Yeah. Few described him as possibly America's next Hitler. J.D. Vance did both. But what Trump admires about Vance is he's come around full circle. And most importantly on the issue that for the future of any Trump presidency matters most, what is your attitude about January 6th? J.D. Vance wasn't in the Capitol on January 6, 2021. He wasn't a U.S. senator. But he said, had he been vice president, which he's now in a position to be, he would have entertained, as sitting vice president Mike Pence refused to, alternate states of electors yeah. and sent that election to the House of Representatives, something the U.S. Constitution does not allow. When states certify electoral votes, that's the one slate of electors, unless there is some very unusual legal intervention, which there was not after the 2020 election. There had been almost 60 lawsuits. The Trump campaign had lost all of them. But J.D. Vance would have intervened as vice president. And I don't believe there was any issue that was more important to this calculus and this decision to former President Trump than J.D. Right. Vance's position on that question. And, Bob, that gets us into policy. Where is J.D. Vance relative to Donald Trump? He is in lockstep with former President Trump on the issues, especially on foreign policy, an aversion to having a U.S. involvement in Ukraine's war with Russia. You're also going to see him underscore economic populism. Yes, he's the junior senator from Ohio, but he's essentially going to live in western Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, according to my conversations with the Trump campaign. They believe he can really play up his own roots in southern Ohio, talking about being a working American who's then succeeded at a high level in the Ivy League, ultimately in business, now in politics, and he can connect with those voters that Trump wants to make sure show up. Picking Senator Vance is about making sure the base comes out for the Republican Party. It's not necessarily about making an overture to traditional Republicans who find Senator Vance far too much to the right. But it, it, at this time, the Trump campaign is making a bet that if they get all the Trump people to come out in the industrial Midwest, he'll, hen, he'll end up back in the White House. Yeah. Imagine a campaign bus that doesn't do anything but go from Pennsylvania to Wisconsin through Michigan in a big oval. Yeah. That's, I think, what we can imagine. A lot of Big Ten football games. <laughs> yeah, from J.D. Vance and the Trump campaign yeah. in that region and for those reasons. Yeah, they used to call it the blue wall. They're hoping that blue wall crumbles once again. Uh, Bob, Major, thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it, gentlemen.